Okay, we're standing here on West Confederate Avenue, and we're going to do a video on Secret to the Battlefield of Gettysburg. Uh, we are here at um, the placement of Hill's Corps, Anderson's Division, Lane's Battalion, and this battery in particular, which is Ross's battery. Now, Ross's battery was one um, Napoleon, three 10-pound parrots, a three-inch Navy parrot, and a 12-inch howitzer, 12-pound howitzer rat which is this last gun over here beyond the tree. Now these guns were in position here and engaged on July 2nd. Uh, the howitzer was detached and served with Patterson's battery south over near Spangler's Woods. Um, of course, on July 3rd, all the guns remained in the operations of the artillery uh, with Patterson's, uh, with, uh, against the Union troops, also known as Longstreet's Assault. However, the one thing that many people don't know about this gun is this this 12-pound mountain howitzer here. This this is one of the secrets of the Battle of Gettysburg. This 12-pound howitzer here um, is a gun from Tennessee. And if we look at the right side of the gun, first there is battle damage on the gun where it was struck and dented. Um, it's also hard to find a mountain howitzer, and you have to pardon the wind, it's a very windy day. But as you look at the maker's mark on the side of the gun, it says Quimby and Robinson, Memphis, Tennessee. And the story on this gun is kind of neat, because General Beauregard in 1862 um, basically had a, a, a scrap drive to support the Confederacy during the American Civil War. Much like the scrap drives during World War I and World War II where they asked people to donate their medals. Well, this happened in 1862 in the, in the Deep South. And General Beauregard had actually asked Southern uh, men and women and households and buildings and churches and, and farms to, to donate medals for the war effort. And w this particular gun here um, is actually made up of uh, melted down bronze from what they called Yankee church bells. Now, of course, before the Civil War, southern states were part of the Union. Um, and, and the churches that were down in the south, most churches at that time had a cupola or a steeple on top of them, and it had a church bell. And those church bells would ring every Sunday morning, letting nearby parishioners know that church was about to, to start. Well, of course, as the war started and began, um, a lot of southerners uh, had a disregard for anything northern and these former churches that were in the Union were now part of the Confederacy and what they did was they asked for them to donate the medals and they took a lot of bells out of the quote Yankee churches and melted them down and replaced them with new cast Confederate bells in the South um, and they basically used the, the melted down bronze to make cannons, this being one of the particular cannons um, that was made from a Yankee church bell so that it could be fired at the Yankees during the different battles in the Civil War, including here at Gettysburg. And it does appear that a, a Yank uh, shell or cannonball hit the side of this where there is battle damage. So again, this is one of the stories of a, uh, unknown stories of a Confederate uh, cannon, a mountain, ha a 12-pound howitzer, made out from made out from Yankee church bells into a Confederate cannon, uh, here on West Confederate Avenue, as a part of the Army Northern Virginia Hills Corps Anderson's Division, uh, otherwise known as, as Ross's Battery. This has been Ross's Battery, Beauregard's Bells on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.